even left room for someone to park behind me. Yeah. That's yeah, the hidden gem. Right, yeah. 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 Hidden gem. Use my podium for. Can we reposition these microphones, guys, Is it possible so that we can actually bit? use them? I'm on the use. side. Okay. Um, we feel like we can start. What do you need to move them up here? If we stick it up we there, just need I just need some place to stick this. Yeah. There we go. All right, good morning, everybody. Thanks for being here today. I'm Ashley K. Sleppold. I'm a partner at the Chandra Law Firm. And uh, we are here today to talk about the case we filed yesterday on behalf of our client, Chantel Glass, who's here with us, um, regarding an attack that she endured at the Cuyahoga County Correction Center uh, almost a year ago to the day. Um, Ms. Glass was picked up uh, on an old traffic warrant and was booked into the Cuyahoga County Jail. Um, as mom of three, she needed to let her family know where she was and requested repeatedly to make a phone call. Uh, she was told that she needed to wait. She was told no. She was told all manner of things. And then she was told that if she didn't stop asking to make a phone call, she would be tied up and maced. That was a threat that was made by a Cuyahoga County Corrections officer. Um, and when she did not, when Ms. Glass did not relent in her request to make a phone call to let her family know where she was, they made good on that threat. She was, uh, you can see from the surveillance video that was produced by Cuyahoga County that corrections officers Idris Farid Clark and Robert Marsh, two individual defendants in the case that we filed yesterday, uh, can be seen bringing a restraint chair into the pod where Ms. Glass was, was locked up. And you can see before they even bring her out of the room, you can see Sergeant Clark shaking the can of pepper spray before they even bring her into the room where, uh, in, out into the outer pod where they've got the restraint chair. They then walk down the hall, or walk down to the cell where she's being kept. They take her from the cell. She cooperates. You can see on the video. She cooperates. She's handcuffed, cooperates in walking down to the restraint chair, follows their instruction to sit down in the restraint chair. They strap her into the restraint chair across her waist. Sergeant Marsh, or um, Defendant Marsh then pulls up on her wrist from behind to remove her handcuffs, yanks her wrists up, pushes her head forcefully down into her lap. Um, again, all visible on the video. And at which point they remove the handcuffs, they strap her left wrist, her left shoulder, her right shoulder, and her right wrist to the restraint chair. She is now immobile, she's unable to move, she is in the restraint chair, um, and while Defendant Marsh is tightening the straps, Defendant Clark takes out the, the pepper spray again and shakes it again, uh, preparing to make good on his colleague's threat to, to mace Ms. Glass. Um, at this point, it appears from the video that Defendant Clark uh, begins to try to secure the ankle straps in the restraint chair. As he reaches his hand between Ms. Glass's knees, she flinches. 
she reacts to a strange man putting his hands between her knees. Um, and it, the video shows Defendant Marsh jumping on that instinctual reaction to hit Ms. Glass. He could have easily stepped back. He could have easily gotten himself out of what he could have unreasonably perceived as being in harm's way. But instead, he chose to attack a woman who was tied to a chair. Sergeant Clark, not to be outdone, finally gets to use the pepper spray. He's repeatedly shaken, despite Ms. Glass being compliant throughout the entirety of the, uh, of the events thus far. Defendant Clark empties a can of pepper spray in Ms. Glass's face. And these two were not the only corrections officers in the room at the time. As you can see from the video, there were multiple others. And what strikes us from that video footage is that none of them seem alarmed by what's happening. It does not seem out of the ordinary to them. It seems as though they are used to this sort of ritual, that this is part of what they see every day, this kind of torture is something that is entirely unremarkable in their work at the Cuyahoga County Jail. Now, what was released, um, video of Ms. Glass's attack was released to Cleveland.com um, some months ago, uh, maybe, maybe early last month. Um, we had requested this video from Cuyahoga County uh, several months earlier. It was not produced to us. When the first video was released um, showing the surveillance video, the stationary surveillance video from behind that has no sound. Um, we filed an action with the Ohio Supreme Court to, to seek the, re the release of the records to us in mandamus. Um, and through that process, we've obtained body camera footage from defendant uh, Idris Farid Clark. The body camera footage is only after the attack. So Clark chose to have his body camera off during the, the initial attack on Ms. Clark. He turned it on for whatever reason after the attack concludes, and it shows the deliberate indifference of his colleagues, the callousness, the lack of attention to her pain and suffering. Uh, but it also captures the protocols and procedures that they employed after, after using the pepper spray on her face. You can see them delaying unnecessarily the beginning of decontamination procedures. You can hear her screams. It is hard video to watch, I will caution you. But you can hear her begging them, explaining that she has asthma, explaining that she's having trouble breathing. And they are completely unaffected by this. After delaying decontamination, they ineffectively decontaminate her. You can see from the videos that Defendant Clark spent more time pepper spraying Ms. Glass than he spent rinsing the pepper spray from her face. You can see Defendant Clark wheeling Ms. Glass around in the chair, tilted backwards, her soaking white dress hiked up to her hips. And no one is no one seems alarmed by this. It is truly disconcerting that employees of the Cuyahoga County Jail who are working on our dime, who are working on behalf of this community, have no, have no empathy, have no visible compassion displayed for this woman as she's evidently suffering. Now, throughout her time, the, the remaining two days that she spent in the county jail before the the uh, outstanding warrant was indicated, uh, New Jersey indicated they didn't want her on the old warrant anyway. She was given no soap, no opportunity to shower, no change of clothes. She experienced intense burning from the pepper spray residue that was not removed, that they made no effort to try and remove. Now, 20 years ago, we would have heard a story like this and thought, there's no way that could happen. There's no way people could behave in this manner just this kind of casual cruelty. But the video doesn't lie. Now we have the video to show us what exactly happened. And we only have those videos because we had to file an action with the Ohio Supreme Court. The county took 
active steps to avoid providing these records that are public records that show exactly what their employees are doing during their workday in the Cuyahoga County Jail. Now we can see, because of the videos like this, because of this great evidence of exactly what happened, we don't have to believe he said, she said. We don't have to trust the credibility of any particular witness. We have videos upon videos that show exactly what took place, that show exactly how they behaved, that there was no justification for engaging in the restraint, no justification for engaging in the in pepper spraying and the way that the employees, one after another, chose to react. As, as Ms. Glass was wheeled into the medical infirmary, um, we can see that even the medical providers in that space, such as Nurse Dana, Diane Lessman, who was the person who, quote unquote, cared for Ms. Glass that day, you can see her joking and laughing with corrections officers. You can see them winking. She winks at, at Sergeant Clark as he asks if you know she's done, if Miss Glass is done, if she can be wheeled out. She is crying out in pain. She is begging them not to kill her. And somehow the nurse, even the nurse, is indifferent to this. It is very, it is it is very disturbing to watch these videos. Um, and you can see Nurse Lessman's face and the faces of the other uh, Cuyahoga County Corrections employees who are pictured, are, are we pictured? That's, that's yeah, right. This is what we've got down here. These are all still shots taken from Defendant Idris Farid Clark's body camera footage. This is how his colleagues are reacting to seeing Ms. Glass screaming in pain. You can hear her screams on the video, and this is the reaction of the employees of the Cuyahoga County Correction Center. This is the face of deliberate indifference in this county. Now, we are gratified that two of the individuals involved, Defendant Marsh and Defendant Clark, have been indicted. Uh, Defendant Clark has been indicted for felonious assault, interfering with civil rights, and uh, unlawful restraint. Defendant Marsh has been indicted for assault, interfering with civil rights, and unlawful restraint. Um, those cases are progressing through the criminal system. Um, and Ms. Glass is determined to hold every individual who is responsible accountable. All incarcerated citizens in our community have the right to be treated with the dignity and respect by the people that we pay to ensure that they're cared for. The time for looking the other way is over. We are going to ensure that Ms. Glass and anyone else who's been in a similar situation, and we know that there are many of them, um, is heard. And we're going to give Ms. Glass an opportunity to be heard right now. She's going to read a brief statement. She will not take questions. And then if you have any questions, I can jump back in and, and answer them. So go ahead, Chantal. Um. I really don't know where to start at. I'm, I just thank God and I'm happy that I'm able to stand in front of you guys and tell my story. To stand up for everyone who's been abused by the Cuyahoga County Correctional Officers. All I want is justice and peace. But I do think about July 16, 2018 every day. Like, what if I would have Stop breathing in that restraint chair. Why did they do this to me? I sat in that chair that day and prayed over and over again that I wouldn't die. I have three beautiful children to live for, and I just thank God that I'm alive and able to seek justice against these correctional officers. Thank you. Any questions? I think all of us, anyone who watches the video, and I encourage anyone um, to watch it through from start to finish. So what you'll see, um, we're, we've got copies of the uh, the full body cam video for you to take with you. And you know, unlike the still surveillance shots, 
that are soundless, you can you can hear it. And, and it's, it, I mean, it's even hard for me to think back. I mean, and, and I didn't live it at the time. So I can, we can only imagine, um, you know, the, the kind of screams that you hear. There are very few things in life that, that lead to those kinds of screams. And the way that um, the, the corrections officers didn't even react to the way that she, just the, the evident pain that she was in that did not seem to trigger any sort of compassionate reaction from the people milling about, people peeking into the closet where they took her to squirt her with a hose. And you can see all of this in the body cam because it's defendant Clark um, who is haphazardly administering the hose to decontaminate Ms. Glass. You can see them take her into a mop closet. You can see them delay for no reason just standing around for a period of time before even beginning the process of reading the you know, an administrative warning that they're, um, that's apparently part of their protocol for uh, beginning the decontamination process. It seems entirely unnecessary after spending time walking down the hall, coming up the elevator, going down the hall, that they would then decide to begin a, a recitation of, 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 a, of an administrative warning about you know, we're going we're gonna to hose you off now, doesn't seem to be the best way to ensure that people, even if pepper spray was necessary, which it clearly was not in this case, even in cases where it was necessary, there's no reason to unnecessarily prolong the suffering, to fail to appropriately flush out someone's eyes, to fail to appropriately do these things. And I'd, I'd encourage anyone to watch the video start to finish and, and feel the emotional reaction that that, that anyone with an ounce of compassion is going to feel. Because you, you see someone in, in agony, and you see someone that, that no one's trying to comfort, that no one's trying to help, that, that the indifference to her pain is palpable, and it's, it's very painful um, to, to watch. Robert Marsh, in his disciplinary hearing, claimed, when I was securing her left leg, she said, if you touch my leg, I'm going to kick you. She lifted her right leg. I pushed her in the face. I did it because there isn't a lot of places to use force on a female. I didn't know if she was pregnant. Do you buy any of that? I do not buy any of that. You can see from the video that she didn't try and kick him until he hurt her. The, the, the reaction, the minor movement that Ms. Glass engaged in when, he, when a, a male stranger put his hand between her knees is not, it is not unreasonable for a woman to react in an instinctual, mild flinch to that kind of, of physical contact. I think they're trying to make excuses for conduct that they've gotten caught engaging in that apparently for the first time they're being held accountable for. You can see from the video that, ta that this is not something that this was new to the, this group of people. Just the, their reactions lead to that inevitable conclusion that this is a ritual of torture that they engage in time and again. They can, I expect that they'll make any number of justifications to try and make it okay that they did this, but the video does not lie. The way that these people behaved is unacceptable. The video does not lie. Why is Ms. Glass not answering any questions? This has been an extremely difficult process for our client and, and to be in a position that um, you know, most folks are not typically engaged in um, responding to the media. We want to ensure that she that this doesn't overly traumatize her beyond what's already taken place. So we want to make sure that we are. You know, she'll do her speaking in court. She is going to be a witness in the criminal process if, if there is that sort of um, if it goes to a trial in in the the criminal matter. And so she'll she'll do her speaking in court. The civil complaint outlines other instances, some that have been indicted, some that haven't uh, reached to date. Do you believe this backs up your claims that this was an atmosphere and this was just the way they did business inside of jail? Some of the instances of, of other abuses of incarcerated citizens in the Cuyahoga County Jail that we detail in our complaint, and it's only some of them, um, it, it demonstrates the the, the type of callous indifference that you can see in the video, both the surveillance video, the silent surveillance video, and the body camera video. And it's consistent. You know, we hear from good corrections officers 
who want to be part of the solution, who are scared of colleagues who are not, you know, who are abusive to inmates, and they're you know, these the good corrections officers are scared that they will be injured, retaliated against, you know, have some consequence amongst their colleagues if they speak out about this kind of behavior. This isn't something any decent person would be troubled to be in this kind of an environment. And we know that there are good corrections officers out there, and we encourage them to continue to let us know when they when they have evidence of these things happening, when they witness this stuff. It's, it's something that ha has happened time and again. The U.S. Marshals found that a history of uh, a, an atmosphere of punitive violence against inmates was something that, that was problematic in this space, um, and, and it's something that needs to be addressed. It's a culture change that has to happen, and this is what Cuyahoga County has nurtured and tolerated and, and even encouraged by, by folks in positions of, of authority um, failing to take steps when, when these instances come to light. What, if anything, have you guys been able to learn about Officer Rob Marsh's disciplinary history and similar instances? I understand that some folks have received public records uh, from Cuyahoga County regarding uh, Officer Marsh, regarding Sergeant Clark. Um, Cuyahoga County continues to withhold those records from us. We've made public records requests months ago. Um, we will continue to follow up in our efforts to uh, secure those records and to ensure that transparency is is the is the story in um, in in the way that our county is carrying out the public's business. To be clear, she was held a total of three days and was never charged. She was held for forty eight hours. Okay. She, she was a, she was brought in on the sixteenth of July. She was released on the eighteenth. She was never charged. Um, the the old warrant from New Jersey was not something that New Jersey. I mean, it's many years old. It wasn't something that New Jersey had any interest in pursuing. Um, so she was released. There was there. Were no charges, either stemming from you know, any previous activity or anything that, that you know she did inside. Oftentimes, you see in, in cases where someone has been, you know, where excessive force is employed against someone that you know, they they start with all manner of charges to to suggest that the person has you know deserved it and that it was something that um, the person brought upon themselves. But that's not something that they can do when it, it's all captured on video. Did she ever receive a bill or anything from the jail afterwards for anything that? In some cases, there could be no place there's any. No. Was she left in a white dress throughout that time, or were you given a jumpsuit at some point, and then? No, Ms. Glass was left in the same clothing that she was uh, pepper sprayed in, and you can see the pepper spray residue, uh, r the sort of orangish red on her white dress in the body cam video. Um, she was left in that dress through the time that she was um, released. She was denied. Despite her repeated requests, she was denied the opportunity to shower or, or change clothes. She was left in those burning, soiled clothes throughout was the stay. Was she ever stay. able to make a phone call at any point after this? Um, I, I believe that you were, was it the second day? It was the second day that she was permitted to make a, finally permitted to make a phone call. And she had three children that were. She has three children. That were worried about where she was. Yeah, little, little kids without their mom is not something that, that's an easy thing to do. So you know, you want to let the kids know. You want to let dad know where where uh, where mom is. That's something that um, I think everyone can understand. I'm a police sergeant with the CPN, and I'm sorry I'm late. So I'm going to ask a couple of questions. To sure. Up. How did the the why did they run her in the first place? How did the news about the warrant come up in the first place? So Ms. Glass's um, sister was having, you know, it was a little bit of a family crisis. They were at her mother's house. Her, her sister had engaged in some self-harm, and police were called. And it seems that police ran, you know, warrant check on everybody who was, was present for this family crisis. Is that usual or unusual to do? Um, I think you might have to ask Cleveland Police that. One question as part of this disciplinary hearing, uh, Officer Marsh, have you ever done something like this before? He replied, no. The disciplinary records show that's not the case. Do you believe that illustrates problems with his answers to other questions as well? In his recollection of what happened that like, evening? I am pleased to have a video that shows exactly what happened that evening so that we can, um, you know, we don't have to rely on Officer Marsh's word. Um, we don't need to rely on his word, particularly where it contradicts the, the video. The video is very clear um, regarding what happened. And 
Uh, I imagine that Cuyahoga County's continued withholding of his full personnel file, um, despite our longstanding public records request, might be part of, of, of the, his, his, pre, his incorrect answer, or his inaccurate answer, truthful or, uh, or otherwise, um, may be part of the reason that we're not seeing those records, despite the, the clear obligation to provide them under Ohio Public Records Law. How long have you requested this? Since April, we've been waiting. You said the body cam cut in and out. Was that the body cam worn by one of the gentlemen who was indicted? Um, the body camera footage is from defendant uh, Idris Fareed Clark, who is the one who employed the pepper spray. He did not turn on the body camera until after completing the attack. So the, the body camera footage begins as they wheel um, Ms. Glass out of the pod down the hallway to the elevator to go up to the, the sixth floor to go to the mop closet to be hosed briefly. Um, the, the camera doesn't, as far as I know, the camera doesn't cut out from the time he turned it on through the time that they closed her way in the isolation room alone for several hours. You put up pictures of eight people. To the best of your knowledge, how many of them are still employed at the jail? What pictures are you talking about? The, the faces? So the three of those are photos of Diane Lessman, who is a nurse. The, the three, okay. um, right. right. So those, those are photos that are captured on uh, Defendant Clark's body camera, just still images pulled out from, from that live footage or from, from that video footage. I do not um, know the identities of some of those individuals. We will find that out in discovery, um, and we will be able to determine whether or not they're still in a position to be interacting with with the incarcerated citizens in our jail. Um, surely, it, it's disturbing to watch this many people in positions of authority fail to intervene when someone is being abused for no reason. That 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 there wasn't a reaction to the violence. No shock, no alarm, no surprise. The way that any of us would react if we saw someone just being brutalized. There, you would expect to see some change of expression at the very least, some, um, some behavior indicating that this was something that struck you as wrong. Um, you don't see that throughout the, the body camera video, and it is, it, it's striking. And, and so we, we look forward to seeing who um, remains part of the, part of the, the workforce uh, at the jail and, and what steps have been taken to train them to respond appropriately. In, in this kind of a, of a situation where someone is brutalizing uh, one of our incarcerated citizens. Let me ask you a couple of questions. The footage that you got came from body cam and overhead, right? Correct. Okay. Then there was a time when she was taken to the co-ed dispensary, if I understand. Was she the only female there, or were there other women there? Or what was what was the composition as she was moving to the dispensary? My my understanding, if you're talking about the infirmary, my understanding, I'm sorry, yeah, the infirmary. I, I think it's I think it's called both things. I think it's colloquially referred to as the infirmary. You can see as which I believe is a co-ed space. As she's wheeled into the infirmary, you can see at least three gentlemen in in orange jumpsuits who we presume to be um, incarcerated citizens. You can see also a number of uh, corrections officers sitting at, at desks along the one side of that wall, um, and and that's where the the nurse was. But was no located. other ladies. I did not see any incarcerated women. If if that's your question, yeah, yeah you can see three gentlemen, but but no other women in that space beside the nurse. And and I think there may have been one other employee who briefly appears in the video. Did the court order the release of the body cam? Or did the county then comply once you went to the court? Uh, once we filed the petition for writ of mandamus with the Ohio Supreme Court, then the county began voluntarily complying before the matter was even referred for mediation, which is common in uh, petitions for writ of mandamus. The Ohio Supreme Court routinely refers those to mediation. They have an excellent mediation program and, and are typically successful at being able to um, negotiate voluntary compliance by the public office. Here, Cuyahoga County simply began providing the records. And one thing that I, I think is um, noteworthy is that we had made a request for the, the, on behalf of Ms. Glass for videos of her 
and the county turned over only one of overhead surveillance video to Cleveland.com before providing it to Ms. Glass. And it's my understanding that Cleveland.com still hasn't received the body camera video. So the process by which Cuyahoga County is making decisions about how and when and to whom to release what information you know, is, is something I'd encourage you to follow up with them on. You know, why, why isn't it uniform that you know, when someone makes a public records request, you provide the responsive records, no matter who it is that's asking, and you do it promptly as the statute requires, instead of requiring people to jump through hoops and follow up. That's not the way this is supposed to work. Is your client testified before the grand jury, either state or federal? Um, we'll not talk about any grand jury uh, participation at this point. You talked about the atmosphere within the jail. How high up do you think responsibility for the creation of that atmosphere goes? I think that's something that we look forward to exploring in discovery. At this point, given the, um, you know, I can point to things in the in the community, seeing the way that um, you know, County Executive Armin Budish secured the retaliatory firing of, of nursing director Gary Brack at the county jail when he publicly advocated at a council meeting for better care of the, the, the inmates under his care. Within days, he was out. And that is something that suggests to me that this is not a, a, a low-level employee kind of problem, that this is an atmosphere that potentially runs all the way up to our highest elected officials. And, and those are the folks that, that we expect to be um, make, taking steps to make sure that this doesn't happen. If, if this is not what they want, if, if, if our elected officials don't want people being abused in the jail, they have the power to take steps to deal with that and to make sure that it doesn't happen. So unless we see those kinds of steps, then I think we can assume that this is consistent with the way that our elected officials um, see this jail running. Have you been frustrated by the pace of change across the street in the jail? Well, as someone who spends her life bending the arc of the moral universe toward justice, I can tell you that I'm always frustrated with the glacial pace of change. Um, but as more and more people are willing to come forward, um, you know, both people who are victims of this behavior and people who are witnesses to it, you know, the good corrections officers I was talking about, as well as you know, prosecuting attorneys being willing to hold these corrections officers accountable. This is something that we didn't see a number of years ago, where this kind of behavior wouldn't be something that you'd see the corrections officers charge. We see that now, so I mean, I, I do see some hope, and we see you know, our efforts on the civil side as you know, being coextensive with, with the change that can be brought about by, by, by employing the criminal process to make sure that people are, are being held accountable. Do you feel that Ms. Glass putting a you know, face to this is going to lead to an onslaught of people doing exactly what she did? I hope that everyone who has been a victim of brutal and needless violence, um, whether in the Cuyahoga County Jail or elsewhere, feels empowered to tell their story and, and reach out to, to see that if justice can be done and how that can be brought about. We're better than this as, as a people, as a community. Cuyahoga County deserves better than people being brutalized when they're supposed to be under the care of, of our of our county government. Right. So no further questions. Thanks, everybody. We appreciate your time. We do have copies of the of the body camera video that um, uh, we can distribute to you on, on disc. Um, you know, if you've got any further questions, let us know. Did you want to sure. to Absolutely. You're also welcome to use the still shots that are on the blog and in the complaint. We posted two versions of the complaint because the why don't we do this first? Sure. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Um, so I was just gonna say the the issue is that the clerk's office, when whatever manual scanning system they use, we had uploaded the complaint with the color stills that were completely legible. But by the time they put it on the website of the docket, it turns into some sort of strange black and white, um, I don't know, almost like cartoons or something. So what we did is if you look on the blog, we put the original color version as it was filed. It doesn't have the timestamp on it, but it is what was filed last night. And then you have the uh, version from the clerk also available to you through the blog post. So you can use either one, but the, the usable stills are going to be in the PDF.
And after talking with the clerk's office, we are going to file a, a, a color copy manually so yeah. that there is a copy in the court record of yeah. what we actually filed that includes the vivid color images. And we're going to do that like right away. So if you guys want to get a file stamp color version by the end of the day, you should be able to do that. Mm -hmm. Sure. Ashley Case Lepley. A-S-H-L-I-E. Case and Briefcase. S-L-E-T as in Tom, V as in Victor, O-L-E. 